give me something to say. What up, world? You are now in tune to Worldwide. Worldwide. It's the best station in the world. How's that? Good morning. As you can see, it's cold in Berlin. As the last few months. <laughs> This is Worldwide FM. Alex Bark with a very special guest. As every time. Danny Berman, aka The Red Reckon. Hey Alex, it's good to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> It had to be one day. You are a part-time Berliner and you're about to leave the city yeah, again. Um, I, yeah, it looks like um, that is on the cards, but I'm still here for the next couple of months. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah seven we, years. We, we, we talk about your experience here in the city. Yeah. <laughs> in the city of cold experiences <laughs> yeah and um, I play some tunes awesome. we, we talk later and yeah. you play thank you more tunes very I happy do. to be here Alex thank you so much for inviting me yeah it's nice to have you and um, we start with this little new EP Ciao Fischio Kiroga, never heard of these guys, just got sent this beautiful track here and that's how we start on Worldwide FM, next two hours from Berlin, have fun. and Balls EP Kiroga Ciao Fischu is the track title and the next one is my favorite at the moment Beach Child and the Slackadelics there's a new album coming Heavy Rockin' Steady is the name of the album and the track is called In My Arms Beach Child and the Slackadelics sounding like this
child and the psychedelics in my arms reminded me a little bit on this old jazz and over tune this takes me back um i've got two or three copies of this album really yeah they were all scratched no <laughs> no I, I managed to actually steal a cd from uh, the sonar collective office with all his permission <laughs> uh yeah steal with permission that's, yeah. that, that's yeah. the new thing yeah? but i'd never seen a cd copy of it and it has this amazing hole in the cover of this yes. sort of kaleidoscopic yes yeah, this album. Wow, I, I didn't understand it at the time. I remember <laughs> I only, I liked like all the, the the commercial tunes on it, but now all the ones that were really super dense and jazzy. Uh, gosh, yeah, yeah. I mean it's 10, 15 years ahead of its yes. time. And now the new Jazzanova album is coming in eh? yeah. uh, summer. Looking forward to that. Yeah, it's, it's just in the last few 100 yards. That. To do. It's amazing because I remember I was at the Samandi gig at uh, X Jazz about two years ago, yeah. chatting with Stefan Leisering, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, we're working on a new album," and he was like, "But it's nowhere, <laughs> you know." And and then suddenly now it's it's done, or yeah. you know, it's yeah. We always take our time. Yeah, yeah but you and... you always get the job done in the end. Yeah, yeah. you have to. <laughs> yeah, 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 but it's inspiring because you know I know the amount of work and you know guest playing and stuff that will go into these records and. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not knocked off on a laptop in kind of, you know, know. two days, you know. <laughs> um, but we can also talk about you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want me to set up my first track? Or? Yeah, that, that would be nice. And then we um, talk a little bit of how, how you made it here to Berlin and yeah. what's the point of being here. I thought we were going to talk about jazz and over for two hours. No. You, know? <laughs> you, you, you didn't tell me I'd have to speak about myself. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sorry. Okay. Sorry. I'm, I'll set up my first track. I just want to say this the, this first track I'm going to play. Um, it was, um, I was in a band at school called The Wizards. Yeah. Uh, when we were like 15, 16. <laughs> the original title was The Wizards of the Spinal Church. And uh, we were really influenced by an album called East Coast Project, which was uh, made in Edinburgh. Yeah. It was a compilation album. And it was A&R'd by Joseph Malik, All right. who you may remember from Compost Stuff. Of course. This was like 94, 95. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we recorded in the studio that they worked in. Mm-hmm. And he signed our track for the next compilation. Wow. So I was like, so there's some serious 18. virtual digging going on now. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, 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 where's the well, music? No, I, I, I don't <laughs> wait till they hear it. There, there'll be no digging. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's kind of, I would describe it as kind of, I guess, kind of acid jazz hip hop or something it's you know yeah, it was okay. it was a long but time you, ago you will play it soon yeah 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 i'll okay. just i'll set it up we just uh, have a few minutes to go okay behind the decks please danny berman behind the decks please yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is worldwide fm and really looking forward to what this young guy is playing today this one yeah another new day first Jasanova album in between 2002 gosh I, I 2002 <laughs> yes that's crazy yeah but your one is older yeah, yeah. You the track I'm now. gonna play is called The Spell and it's from I think 1995 okay um, we recorded in uh, this studio called 64k in Edinburgh and we were so lucky a friend of ours took the day off school. He yeah. was only 16 and he did like session keyboard on it. And uh, a guy came to drop off some percussion. Mm-hmm. A guy called, uh, he was called Guy Nicholson uh, and he played on the track. I mean, without their kind of contributions, who knows, it would have probably been pretty you must, sparse. You must have been pretty young back then. So young and, you know, really nervous. And <laughs> we didn't understand that, you know, because the drums were live, that meant we couldn't just use samples easily because it wasn't like MIDI, you know, it wasn't yeah, yeah. In, like, quantized. We were so naive and... The engineer was called Uncle Jack, and he's a legend, a really amazing producer, and he used to sleep in the studio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's proper, you know, like sleeping, <laughs> mixing, and I remember we reached a creative... Taking showers. And... <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Possibly not, <laughs> but we reached a creative impasse, mm-hmm. and he bought a crate of McEwen's Export Lager. All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, we called it the Red Death because if you drank, you were young. If you drank quite a lot, you got sick in those days. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and we we made it through the creative impasse. And now now we want to listen to that. Yeah, song, <laughs> it's, it's came just out interesting of hearing it. It's interesting hearing it because we lived in a Scottish fishing village. Yeah, you know, all of us. Uh, we listened to East Coast hip hop pretty much exclusively. Mm-hmm. We were really into Funkadelic and Parliament. We, you know, it, we were so young. And, you know, not not terrible, you know. <laughs> not terrible. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, by today's standards of something like, you know, uh, Yusef Kamal or something, it's not quite on that level. But, you know, like I say, there was no internet. We used to buy cassettes from our price in Dundee. You could literally every two weeks go on a trip to Dundee, spend all your money on one album. Mm-hmm. And, you know, something like Brand Nubian or, you know, the first Tribe Called Quest album, KMD. And, and you would completely engross in that one album. Oh, that's, read the sleeve yeah, notes, everything. 
you know. You knew how the, the <laughs> drama was. You and... knew the samples, you know. <laughs> I used to know all the samples, you know, even though I didn't actually have the records. Okay, oh, I'll hit play. Yeah, was that was that the beginning for you as well? Finding out hip hop samples and yeah, uh, I I had a suitcase turntable, this little you know mm -hmm. one with the tiny little platter, and I was doing needle drag loops when I was like 13, <laughs> where you play like. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and I devised, I devised a technique where I could put the needle down again and again and again on exactly the same spot with, with your hand. Yeah, and repeat. Yeah, yeah, not with not not on an app. <laughs> uh, you know, I was I was trying to make hip hop with no equipment. I also did pause tapes, which is where you repeat the same thing again and again and again. Yeah. And I had a sharp back to back tape player, which you could do overdubs on. Of course. So I did overdubs. So I was. You know, I was trying to make hip hop in a fishing village when I was like 13. Okay. Which is, I mean, looking back, it's amazing because there was no instructions. There was no. But sometimes you know, no it's YouTube. good to have not the uh, settled down rules of a genre. Sure. Sometimes it's sure. just good to go out of your what you think is good. That was the beauty of hip hop in those days. Was you know something like a um, description of a fool by a tribe called Quest, sampled "Running Away" by Roy Ayers, which nowadays people would more link relate to house. You know, yeah. and things like New York and Soul, when that came out, that album, it wasn't seen as a house album. No, you know, it wasn't. Sure I mean, I'm not saying it is now, but, you know, it was so much more free and open. Motor Bass Pan Soul, 96, mm -hmm. you know, two hip hop guys from France make trying to make house music. Mm -hmm. I wish more of that would and go do, on today. Do you, is it still for you relevant, that kind of freedom when you when you produce? It, it's the most relevant thing. I mean, really, I, 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 why would I be interested uh, about, by anything today? Mm -hmm that's been, you know, a sort of 16th generation copy, you know, a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. I'd rather go back to the 90s or even the late 80s and listen to the source, you know, because mm -hmm. that was when things were being innovated, things were being invented. And, you know, like I say, the internet, digital, it's, it's taken all of the kind of uh, value out of music. You know, there's no economic value and there's no kind of production value. People don't want to spend five years learning how to be a producer or a DJ. They just want to have, you know, two grand a gig or, you know, four grand a gig, girls, boys and all that sort of stuff. They don't want to do the work. Yeah, so. let, let's see if this could be also a chance. For, <laughs> for, but I mean, I mean, there's generations, there's technology evolving and mm -hmm. all of that. And obviously um, you used the steps and technology as mm -hmm. well with the computers and recording and doing not the loops by hand. <laughs> yeah, but I miss but, that. But but maybe I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. That all what we have nowadays, the digital, the virtual world, uh, will also bring the music to another level, which in, in a few years we will say, okay, that's that was good. My only thing about all of it is, is the commodification of everything. You know, everything's for sale now. So, it, it, you know, I want music that's being made because people want to make music, mm -hmm. not because they want the outcome of making music, you know? Yeah. And the same with all the production uh, technology stuff. All they've done is they've made machines do things that you could do anyway, but it's easier if you push the button. Yeah. So for me, you know, I, I think it's much more evident in the music from the 90s. And, you know, all the sample, but like sort of people like, um, say, Ballistic Brothers or, you know, um, Ash, you know Ashley Beadle stuff from, from the 90s. I mean, he's actually going back to that feeling now. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are realizing that there was a heyday in dance music, soulful dance music. And I think that I really think it's coming back. If you look at people like Leifar, mm -hmm. Wajid, um, Charisma, Charisma's really hot again. You know, it's 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 cool. It's for sure coming back. But it's there's also a, a reaction on that. Like you have a lot of like interesting live yeah. uh, bands right now, yeah. like just recording yeah. their music. Like Wolfpack, and Pat, Coyotes, Coyote, um, Kamal. Um, yes, all the jazz yeah. uh, section in um, UK y is, yeah. is great and on yeah. fire at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, let's listen to yeah, some music sure. uh, you just described. <laughs> We are very curious nice. and, and listen to Danny Berman's music. The first track he ever did. <laughs> the Spell by the Wizards. <laughs>
So from something from like 95 to something from 2018, this is Modified Man. Kingswood Drive. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think this is out soon on Albert's Favourites. Adam Scrimshire. And his friend Mike, I think. I just want to apologise for my grumpy old man. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just, I'm like, oh, it was better in my day, you know. It was, it's amazing now. It's amazing. It's just all about your mindset. <laughs> made a special folder today my records are all in storage unfortunately so i had to you know raid the hard drive and the download section of my computer and i made a special folder and it's all nice new or old but new worldwide fm vibe and stuff so i hope you enjoy it
forthcoming Bergerac from the fake Congas. Um, it's called Fiscus Benjamin. Out sometime towards the end of this year. Party time. Chuka 
more forthcoming Bergerac. This is Tommy Rawson Deep Blue. This is going to be out before the summer, I hope, depending on pressing plants, etc. Yeah, so this track, Tommy Rawson, Deep Blue, I played it at um, Love International Festival last year on the Olive Grove stage, and I was playing after Manpower, and he was, you know, quite banging, and at a point during my set, I just thought, yeah, I wonder how this is going to go down, and uh, it, it completely smashed it, and it was so nice to see a huge crowd of people really feeling that summer vibe, and uh, yeah, so I'm hoping that it's going to get some play again this year if I can get it out in time. So yeah, Tommy Ross and Deep Blue coming soon on Bergerac.
and this is more forthcoming Burge rap. I can't say who it's by because we haven't decided on his artist name yet, but yeah, it's called Private Dick. So yeah, this one is on Dimensions Recordings. Um, I don't know who the artist is, I'm afraid, um, but I got sent it by Andy LeMay, so thank you, Andy. It's called Drums, Please, and it's a f- eight-track EP, maybe mini-album by some, some guy. <laughs> I- I'm feeling it.
by the wonders of the internet. It's Karem Ag- Agbag? Agdag? Karem Agdag. On Dimensions. Classics time, Victor Duplay. When I was doing my It Was Better in the Olden Day speech, it is important to recognise the musical contributions from people like Jazzanova, Victor Duplé, Seiji, you know, Mad Lib, DJ Wells, or, you know, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the sterling work of those guys. Alex isn't paying me to say this, honest. Hey, sexy. So this is like my jazz dance classic special tune. Modern jazz dance. Archetype. Chase scene with zero on public transit recordings, Moonstar's label around, I don't know, 2004, 2002. Yeah.
I gotta give some shout outs. Shout outs to Bean Noodler tuning in from Nottingham. Big love, sir. Alex says hello. Shouts to R Vaz, aka Rebecca Vazman, tuning in from Glasgow. Long time no see, pal. Shouts to David Kerslake from Nottingham. Big up. Shouts to Mike Franklin, aka Hambo. Even bigger up. Because you're taller. Jennifer Kelsey, Bristol, A up. PK, Nottingham, yo. New Magraban off the album Crime Jazz. Out soon on RNS.
that's what I call a freestyle DJ set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I saw you play in Nottingham in 2004, mm -hmm. and I seem to remember it being rather freestyle as well. All right. Which was inspiring for us in those days because we only played those kind of sets in bars, really. All right. You know, there was like Mr. Scruff or someone, but yeah, so... You know, I was inspired by the <laughs> the Jazzanova vibe. By the way, Nottingham, I recently played there, and, yeah. and uh, were a lot of people like asking about you. <laughs> you, you moved. He moved to Berlin, and yeah. and what what really uh, uh, is still in my mind? They said you were the guy with the with the uh, funny outfits, always walking around in Nottingham I, back, back in the day. Well, you know what? <laughs> at the time, I I mean, this is the thing. I look at photographs of myself five years ago, and I'm like, God, my clothes are terrible. So, <laughs> I mean, back in the day, I went through a golf phase. Yeah, I remember. that's what they were talking yeah, about. I was really into hip hop. It's <laughs> making a lot of hip hop beats, and I bought a pair of bathing ape trainers that had like a full on print all over them. Mm -hmm. They were like Air Force copies, but with a print, the bathing ape print, and and I. I bought a load of golf clothes, which uh, uh, I'm, I wasn't very well off, so it was Dunlop. You you thought you thought that uh, hip hop is golf. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, it Bling. was it was a look. You know, yeah. it was a, a look that was available yes. for a budget prices at a local sports store. Yeah, but you have to, you have to be careful. People remember those things. Yeah, yeah. there was also, I guess, a <laughs> they forget the music, but they never forget the golf clothes. Well, there's a there's a photo from one of the parties that we were at, and I'm wearing like a farmer's cap, mm -hmm. and, and I'm looking. Really really moody at the camera <laughs> and the the caption was get off my land you know so yeah. that photo gets resurrected there's so many photos that get resurrected yeah. from nottingham um yeah it was great i was there for 11 years it was totally where i was musically trained yeah there was a great record store called funky monkey yeah um the guy that worked there well, there's a few guys that worked there and they really helped me they streamlined great music towards me yeah. and then there was a club called the bomb which is where i saw you play and the bomb was legendary really low ceilings amazing yeah. sound system it was you know you could go behind the dj booth and you could watch from behind the dj djing and see the dance floor yeah. so you got to be one meter away from people like you know kenny dope giles peterson groove rider yourself lots of it was inspiring as a mid-twenties guy to get to be so close to quality dance music. When did you come to Berlin? When, when 2011? It was March the quite 13th. A, quite a while now. Yeah, it's um, eight, eight years nearly. It'll be eight years on March the 13th. And what made you move here? Uh, well, I, I just really didn't want to move to London. I was really sick of Nottingham. Uh, I'd come to the end of a relationship and I just wanted to completely restart my life. Right. And I DJ'd in November 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it was called Shea Jackie. It's yeah. now um, Yarm. Yes. But uh, and I really enjoyed the Berlin vibe. It was, you know, austere. It was cold. Everyone wore grey. You know, <laughs> everyone was really thin and sexy. <laughs> you know, and it was just this sort of Berlin and kind pale. of. You know, yeah, yeah, like you know, like it was polite, but there was a distance. You know, right. Right. and that was interesting to me because you know. In the UK, everyone always knows everyone's business, you know? So I really wanted to start again. Um, and yeah, I just um, put all my stuff, my friend drove all my stuff over in his car. Mm -hmm. uh, and I moved to uh, Zonin Alley. Yeah. Uh, and it was the day that I arrived as well. There was this uh, terrible arson attack and people actually died. Mm -hmm. And when I was arriving into Berlin, I phoned the lady who was in charge of the Airbnb. Yeah. And she answered the phone crying, saying, they're dead, they're dead. And okay. the fire had happened directly behind my bedroom window. So oh, if you imagine my first night in Berlin, there was like a crime scene outside my window, but it didn't put me off. I played at Same Heads on my first night in Berlin, which is quite close to Zon and Alley. And I remember managing to find my own way home with the internet. Very, very, very drunk. I'd been awake for 24, 48 hours because of the traveling over. Mm -hmm. But I was, ex you know, exhilarant because I was like, I'm on my own in Berlin and... That's the thing about, I have to say, when I first arrived here, just being able to navigate your way around, even though it wasn't always easy. Yeah. I love that feeling of independence and being alone. Alone on the streets. Yeah. And would you say that Berlin or your, your time here changed your music? Your Probably, yeah. I mean, my emotional state changes my music. So when I arrived, you know, I guess I was still in the UK mode. Mm -hmm. And then I went into the, the dark abyss Of, you know, I, I made some techno tracks. I made tracks that were being played by sort of, not necessarily, I don't think they were played at Bergheim, but they were played by, you know, Panorama Bar techno ish DJs. Yeah. Uh, I just tried a lot of different things. I was, 
constantly being influenced by going out and hearing new sounds and stuff. But as I've got a little bit more aged, okay. um, you know, married and, you know, my lifestyle changed. And now you, I'm You much... met your wife here. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and but... play, uh, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> you were. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You and, you and Daniel Best were yeah. there on the night that I met my future wife. See, it was at a Michelle Berger Hotel. Yeah. And she kind of knew you both a little bit. And it yeah. was really it really was nice that. There was a sort of, it was a great night. I played at a refugee party uh, about blank, mm -hmm. which was to raise money for refugees. And we walked in and this African guy was like, you two should get married. <laughs> and I was like, well, I met her, okay. half, I met her half an hour ago. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was totally, it was a great, you know, just, yeah. I mean, I never really think about what Berlin gave to me. You're just kind of in it, yeah, you know, you're in the thick of it. Shall I put another tune on? Um, we can it? talk or you play as uh, you, as you wish. You know, a bit underneath, maybe a bit of yeah. Go just, ahead. Just some, something, some vibes. As you can see, we are on live here from Berlin, Worldwide FM. And with uh, something sort of jazzy. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> something vaguely. You found something. I think so. So, so for people who just tuned in, this is Danny Berman. AKA AKA the Red hot Rackham. coins, red reckon. Yeah, we should talk about hot coins actually. Yeah, yeah. Because this you is, signed was, that album. We signed it. It's there in the in the background, as you can see. The damage is done. What a nice uh, uh, title. Yeah. And you had a very nice recording session, I've heard, in a studio somewhere in Austria. Yeah, um, I was really really lucky actually. Um, basically, um, I. What happened was, oops, um, yeah, I, I kind of made the album on my laptop, mainly in the UK, and it yeah. was just a laptopy album. And when I was at the Garden Festival in 2010, I met um, some Austrians, and they were really nice. And we went and had this amazing day outside of the festival on a beach, you know, sort of sheltered beach, and no one knew each other, but it was a really special vibe a bit like being on an island a desert island you know mm -hmm. like in the beach the book or something yeah. we had lilo races and everyone you know it was a good vibe and i kept in touch with them and one of them had a recording studio in um this place called turnitz which is near st polten which okay. is fairly near vienna so it's like a really remote village up in the mountains and uh, he had this SSL desk that was the original desk on the Townhouse Studios in London. So it was used to make... The uh, Collins and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Public Image Limited Metal Box album. And then also that they just, they invented gated reverb ah, on the right. desk. Because when Phil Collins was playing with Genesis, he was talking on the talkback mic and he played drums at the same time. And it massively compressed it. And it did this thing where it cut the tails off all of the sounds. Right. So it went shh, 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 like that. And they got the whole desk modified with the same compressor that was on the talkback mic so that they could then do it with, you know, yeah, instruments. Yeah, by, yeah. It was called gated reverb. So I mixed my punk funk New York influenced, you know, weird new wave album on this desk, which yeah. was used to make those, you know, records. And it was an amazing experience. Yeah, and um, it sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, <laughs> It's a, it's a very strange time in my life. You know, I was kind of, I was, you know, you know, I was single. I was quite footloose. You yeah. know, I was quite sort of crazy doing some crazy shit. But, you know, it went into the music. I can't believe that I decided to be a singer in a band. Yeah, I That's couldn't believe it. Insanity. <laughs> I don't think anyone could. But, but I was fortunate that I managed to get really amazing musicians. Yeah. So they carried my kind of I remember attempts. the famous Wilde Renato record release party. Yeah, that was, but that, but that was all right. I mean... I was on stage in front of like my fam my parents and yeah. all my friends and come on that's the most scary audience you it was like yeah. a baptism of fire and uh, and then then we played at the garden festival before metro area and metro area like they influenced me massively yeah. and you know um, uh, Morgan Geist was just like you know y'all are a real band man we we're just <laughs> press and play you know uh, it was it was amazing and you know people like crazy p were in the audience mm -hmm. you know i saw crazy p from years ago they were a huge in inspiration on me they have a great life band as well yeah so just to have them in the audience and not leaving <laughs> was you know this is the thing i mean we didn't really have any rehearse we, we rehearsed but we didn't have any kind of small gigs you know the first gig was like full renata mm -hmm. and it was the most busy renata they had the whole year and then the garden festival is quite a big gig as well so it, it would have been nice to have maybe had some more smaller build-up gigs yeah 
uh, and I really want to do it again, you know? Yeah, do but it. I want to, but it. it's just Red Rackham, Hot Coins, radio show, free record labels, you know, single lifestyle, yeah. etc. cetera. One you man know? show. Yeah, I was, I, I just couldn't handle it. Husband. I couldn't, I could, yeah, I, I was the husband, <laughs> I was the husband of the scene, <laughs> you know? I couldn't, I, I was, you know, Kids would be the next step. <laughs> Produce them. No, uh, it's, it's possible. Uh, you know, but yeah. you know, it, it really, I'd learned, this is what I learned, is that I can't, I'm not invincible. I can't take on all that stuff yeah. anymore. I can't. And just saying, hey, you know what? I'm tired. I'm not going to send that email. I'll send it tomorrow morning. Oh, it's you? an amazing feeling. Yeah. It's like, wow, you know, because <laughs> it was like being in the middle of a, a you know, a, you know, a cannonball or something, like being fired out of a cannon and you're like, ah, and it just keeps going and going, you know? Yeah. This, uh, the one man show phenomenon is, is big nowadays. Huh? <laughs> you have to be your own booker. You do yeah. your social media. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, in the end, it's probably uh, uh, about your constitution, really, how you feel. If you're healthy, you can do it. I think you, you have to basically compartmentalize everything and you have to also be. That's why, you know, you meet a lot of big artists and mm -hmm. they, they can't remember people they've met many times because they just can't remember everybody. The parts of many. your brain are full. But <laughs> that's one of the keys to success, by the way. If you remember who everybody is, then everybody feels respected. And then, you know, people like you yeah. and then they want to, you know, and I can never remember anybody. Yeah. So I think that's. But, but who, are, who are you again? <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, but uh, yeah, I think David Crosby did an album called Can Anyone Tell Me My Name? <laughs> <laughs> that was my vibe back in the day in Berlin. You know? <laughs> people would come up to me like, hey, Danny, Danny, it's and me. You were like and I'd be like. Oh, and they've got, oh, you've got a haircut. It, 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 I think there's actually a syndrome where you can't recognize people's faces. Mm -hmm. So if someone had a hat on or changed their hair, I just wouldn't recognize them at all. Okay. But people still do recognize you as a great teacher, as a great producer, your wanky, won wonky, wanky bass line. Wanky, wanky bass line. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's made, another one. Made, 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 uh, it, it was big, huh? Last yeah, year? Yeah, well, it was 2016. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was the biggest selling vinyl house single. It was number one on Juno. Wow. Number one on Phonica. So, yeah, it was all right. And it was just on Bergerac, or did you license it to... I, I, did, I did it on Bergerac. I did the vinyl on Bergerac. I mm -hmm. never... I retained the rights to the vinyl, so I still press up the vinyl. Okay. But I licensed the digital to Classic slash Defected, mm -hmm. and they pumped it up heavily on Radio One, which was great. And, yeah. you know, got it to a completely different audience. And they also got remixes done by Kink and Luke Solomon did one with Eats Everything and Lord Leopard from Alfresco Disco in London, uh, Bristol, I think. Yeah. So it's taken on life of its own. You, you have it with you? Yeah, I can play it maybe, if you want. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, For sure. people who did not know or maybe not listen to radio <laughs> pretty bored of it i played it on saturday actually in renata and it was like i was playing and the guy yeah. playing after and then me people left was no, the guy was like danny please you've got to play it as your last tune and i was like okay so i did it and it was like a football crowd <laughs> eruption of like and, you know so maybe i should play it more yeah sometimes uh, i i remember when people just ask me all the time to play our old ian pooley remix again it can get on your nerves but in general We should do it from time to time because it probably uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, means something to people. The thing is, that's what people know about you best. So in the end, you know, if someone has a signature dish and you go around their house and they make you some new stuff that you don't, you never had before, you want the signature dish, you know okay. what I mean? So Then let's celebrate it and play it again. And we talk later a little bit more. But this is like a special version because ah. it has a special <laughs> intro. <laughs> The Renata crowd cheering. <laughs> no, this is um, a boat party or something. All right. Can I just say, 
this track exists because of Berlin because I'd been out for like 48 hours and I got home and I made music to try and remain sane. So this track was made to sort of, you know, to stop the voices basically. And fortunately it was actually a good track. So I, something good came out of my you know, decadent lifestyle. Shout outs to Tom Hutt, shout outs to Stephen Robertson.
Okay, okay, you've heard enough of that one. Oh, you know what? I've made about another 50 as good as that. It's just that no one cares about them as much. <laughs> Damn you.
So this one is shop only from Bikini Wax Records in Berlin. It's by NK Experience. It's called Donna Homix. But maybe that's the name of the track, actually, NK Experience. I need to explore the label a little bit. Okay, yeah, so it's by Pata Mamba, and the track is called NK Experience. This is shop only on God Helmet uh, from Bikini Wax, and everyone I've told about this record has bought it, so it's hot, hot, hot vibes. Okay, so next up I'm going to play something off Bergerac. It's the next Bergerac, which is coming out, and it's by James Dole, a.k.a. Jens Dole, who was, is the drummer for Hot Coins. So yeah, he's doing an EP for me. That's going to be out probably middle, end of March. So I'm going to play a track from that next. Changing the tempo with Grand by James Dole, forthcoming on Bergerac.
shouts to Stoyan, aka Charlie Smooth. Shouts to Jonah Jeffries. Great to have you tuned in, guys. Shouts to Mike Huckabee. Shouts to Simon Dutton. Yeah, I didn't tell everyone about when I taught you how to DJ when I was a teacher at college. But I can if you want. <laughs> So yeah, this is Bergerac 8. I'm just sending Bergerac 9 off for mastering now. I've got about you know, eight or nine releases lined up. So 2018 is going to be the year of Bergerac. Unfortunately, none of them are actually by me. So I need to, you know, I need to work on that. It's the year I don't do anything. I just put other people's music out and relax. a dub plate business from gosh I don't know we heard this on an old co-op recording or something and I managed to work out who it was and yeah I got I got sent it <laughs> I won't say that when I man say all that
Aardvark. Aardbidge. So yeah, it's past midday now. So I think you guys need to be warmed up for the afternoon. Red Rackham with Alex Park on Worldwide FM. So I have to give a shout out to Daya from Bali for, for this one. But it's a cover up. He, he gives me the track, but he doesn't tell me the real artist name. <laughs> I don't think this is by Alessandra Mussolini, do you?
The Japanese stuff's so tight you can kind of beat mix over it. So anyone who steps to me and says I can't beat mix at the next gig, which they did on Saturday night because my mixing was shocking. Listen to that one. I can do it sometimes. This one, New Loan, it's called Hyper Seconds and it's out on his Ambivert Tools Volume 3, amazing, check this. So a little Matt Cutler story, a.k.a. Lone. I knew him years ago in Nottingham and he was like um, in a group called Kids With Tracksuits and they made hip hop stuff. And I was playing with um, Flying Lotus and I was playing stuff like uh, Asbo by Lofa, which is like dubstep stuff. And I remember Lone was looking, uh, how can we put it? He, he was having a good night. Uh, and you know, it's amazing to see what 15 years later, him doing an essential mix. And, you know, album after album for r and a DJ Kicks. So I'm really, really proud of him, you know, because I saw where he came from. So massive respect alone.
taking risks. <laughs> Sometimes. I like I like DJs taking risks. Yeah. Well, you know. Just go 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 yeah. forward. <laughs> the way I see it is is that I hope after 24 years of DJing that my quality control is okay. Yeah. So I just think, look, whatever I decided no, I was you good. Several times you, um, like, if I play it, I mean, all right, it might be a little bit slapdash for some people, but who wants to hear, you know, 10 house records in a row? You would say it's selection first and then... <laughs> Mixing 15th. <laughs> well, I can actually mix, you know, yeah, but I, I think, know. to be honest, nowadays I'm at that point where I actually enjoy mixing badly. <laughs> because it's not because it's like you know it's more it's not mixing perfectly it's not so funky. A, a thai japanese tune from the 80s is perfect yeah, well, I, you know what all the japanese stuff they're so tight i don't know if they played to a click they probably did probably but you can beat mix like house music in Often, with japanese yeah. jazz funk which you know, which is just did. it's amazing <laughs> yeah Danny, what what are the next plans for you? Okay, well, um, as I said earlier, I've got yeah. a probably eight or nine releases coming on Bergerac by lots of different artists, which yeah. really excites me. So I'm firmly in record label mode, which is a nice break from being an artist. But how many catalog numbers you have now? Uh, well, the one coming out by James Dole is number eight. Okay. And I've done two albums, so it'll be single number eight, two albums, and then I'm getting up to sort of 15, 16, hopefully this year. All right. So I've got about another six or seven to go. Okay. Really amazing, really interesting, very diverse stuff. I've got some EBM stuff from a guy called Body Beat Ritual, which is very gnarly, mm -hmm. intense. Uh, I've got the Tommy Raw Sun, which I played earlier, which is quite jazzy and, you know, summery. Uh, I've got the, the unnamed artist guy who's done a sort of 80s house full instrumentation, all live playing. It's, it's all pretty jazzy in a way, but it's all dance music, you know? You know what? I never really, when, when we met first, I never really thought that you'd like uh, such a jazz guy, actually. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, know, I know it doesn't really come across in my no, music, but no. I, I have a lot of jazz and, you know, what, like I have a lot of that sort of stuff, but I don't really... I'm not part of that circle, really. I, I come from a, the rave. Yeah, from the other side. I'm like a jazzy raver. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a ravey jazzer. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But I come from hip hop, you know, and yep. hip hop is birthed out of jazz, really, and samples. So, yeah. I mean, I was a musician when I was like 12. So I've, I've done a lot of musical things. Professional in my life. musician with 12. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was in the recording studio yeah, yeah. when I was 16. <laughs> no, we had a four track. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what's next for me is I. I need to make some records for myself. Yep. I have 50 demos. As I was telling you earlier, yeah. I can't even remember. Like, I, I'm losing tracks have? because <laughs> I think that I've imagined that they exist. And then when I'm in the shower, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and you remember the, the track name, you yeah. know? So there's so much stuff to finish. Okay. And what else is happening? It looks, it looks like a busy future. I'm you. making a video. Oh. A film. <laughs> well, I made one just before Christmas for my single Place For Me. Okay. Which actually, I should play that, shouldn't I, really? I should play my last single. Yeah. Uh, Place For Me and Exalt came out just before Christmas. I made a sort of video with a guy called uh, Andre, Funky Traveler, and we're making another one for James Dole. We're doing a documentary on James Dole. All right. Because he's a very prominent theatre musician I playing know. all over Germany. So we've done a documentary. We've been filming him playing in the Maxim Gorky Theatre. So, yeah, right now yeah. I'm, make, I'm making a film. <laughs> But yeah, it's going to be like six or seven minutes long, but it's really exciting. It's great. What I'm really enjoying is, is taking control of my content because, as you know, the media has quite a strong grip, and which is why radio, radio has become so big again. You know why? Yeah. Because it's not controlled. It's not controlled the same way, you know? It's yeah. much more free, and you can be more freestyle. So yeah, I'm really enjoying as making we, my content. As we enjoyed it today yeah. a lot. Thank you. I mean, we are almost done. I would yeah. say you should play your last yeah, yeah, yeah. single. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll do we it. We have five minutes to go. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, anytime soon, you want to come by, please. Oh, well, thank you for inviting always, me, Alex. Always welcome. Really thank enjoyed you. it. It's been a joy. Yes, for me Thanks, too. Thanks, guys. And next uh, Worldwide Sessions with Daniel Haxman. Ooh. Yeah, it's coming to He's us. got a new album coming out. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah. And after that, we have uh, Frank Wiedemann from Arm. Uh, the Big Guns. Present, presenting uh, his new album. There's a new album. Coming. The Big Guns. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're big yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not in the right way. <laughs> in some places, but not in others. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Danny Berman. Thank you. Red Rackham, Hot Coins. Thank you, Alex. Park. And hope to see you soon again Bye. here on Worldwide FM. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we are almost done. Five minutes to go. Last track is...
almost. Got it. Ah. Okay, let's go. So show's over, two hours worldwide FM from Berlin, Danny Berman in the studio, Red Rackham, Hot Coins, what a trip, thanks for this little journey, hope to see you soon, I hear you soon, again, Thank you. and as I said, next edition with Danny Hexman from Berlin, and followed by Frank Wiedemann from Am presenting their new record. Stay tuned, playlist as always worldwide.net. Hope you enjoyed it. 
See you next time. Give me something to say. What up, world? You are now in tune to Worldwide. Worldwide. It's the best station in the world. How's that?